Last night, Australia's top spy, the boss of ASIO, Mike Burgess. I was very critical of him on the show last night, and, and we'll get to that in a minute, Peter. But he said that he was pressured by senior officials to ease up on ASIO's interference operations, and this is despite evidence that we've been targeted um, in record numbers by foreign spies and agents. This is quite a major revelation from the boss of ASIO, that he has personally been pressured by senior bureaucrats to back down on his foreign interference operations. It's very concerning. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to tell you, Shari, that if that pressure was put onto Mike Burgess, uh, it's not because we're being spied on by Canada or Cuba or Costa Rica. There, there is only one country which is causing this level of concern, and it's China. Um, and still inside Canberra, there is this constituency which says, look the other way because we're making so much money from China that, you know, let's not bother about espionage. You know, I, I fully support Mike Burgess in him saying that he's not going to put up with that. Um, ASIO has an important remit to prevent hostile intelligence activities happening in Australia. And if that means that we've got to push hard against Chinese espionage, then so be it. There, there, yeah. are, there are more important things at stake here than simply... Um, you know, selling commodities to, uh, to interests, China. Business definitely. Yeah. Look, on my show last night, I was very critical of the security agencies, not just ASIO, but also ASD, the Signals Directorate, for failing to warn other government departments about the risk of having the Chinese security cameras in their buildings. We found out that 88 politicians have them installed and they're currently being ripped out. Um, you know, what do you think? How could the spy agencies have such a sophisticated understanding of this and yet fail to warn anyone else? I'm really at a loss and I reflect on this, Shari, that a couple of years ago when I was running ASPE, the Strategic Policy Institute, in, in November of 2019, I requested our building owners to take down um, Chinese-sourced surveillance cameras. It, it was that obvious that you didn't need to be running an intelligence agency to understand this was a threat. Um, and, and frankly, I think across the public service, um, we, we have not had our act together to really deal comprehensively with this wide-ranging espionage threat, not exclusively, but primarily from China. Uh, and so three years later to be now told that there are hundreds of sites where these cameras have to be taken down, that's just not good enough. The public service needs to think harder about how it protects itself. Uh, and, you know, frankly, it, it won't just be security cameras. There will be other instances where exactly. there should be concerns as well. Exactly. And, you know, these have to be dealt with up front. And, and that starts with an honest conversation about where is the threat coming from? Uh, and once we have that conversation, we can know better how to deal with it. Yeah. I, I just want to play you what Mike Burgess had to say in Senate estimates about why the security agencies hadn't warned anyone. Have a look at this. I understand where you're going with your concern and I would, sh would share with you the concern of nothing wrong with the technology. It's where the data that it collects and where it would end up and what else it could be used for would be of great concern to me and my agency extraordinary. Now, the PM next week, uh, Peter, is holding a cybersecurity roundtable. It seems Australia is so far behind on cybersecurity. I mean, ASIO not even realising that cybersecurity is at the heart of foreign espionage. Mm. Uh, well, uh, it's at, at the heart of it, along with human security, and often the two things en enable each other. But yes, I think um, Australians are fooling themselves if they think that we are not a high priority Chinese target. And that's not just into defence and national security. It's across any industry. It's into our universities. It's at all levels of government. That's just how China does spying. Um, it's collect the data uh, as much as you can and then look afterwards to see if it may be useful or can be sewn together in some way. So we've, we've got to get smarter and more savvy about this yeah. and not just think that it's everything's fine and somehow Australia's not being targeted. Yeah. Peter Jennings, thank you for joining me.